Okay, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Okay, so today we will continue our lecture on product management and strategy. Okay, so product is the first of the four marketing mix element, four uh, four piece, which is the most important element. So product ni adalah yang paling penting dalam marketing. So a product exists as a result of efforts by the seller to match their resources with the requirements of the market. So kita a uh, product yang dikeluarkan tu adalah mengikut permintaan a uh, market lah. Okay, product is seen as the central element of any company and all marketing activity is seen to center on it. So marketing tu mestilah orang kata kita punya fokus adalah kita punya produk. So as the first of four piece, produk is the starting point for the majority of planning activities. It is something that can be adapted, differentiated, introduced, modified or eliminated for profit making purposes. Okay, so without a well developed product strategy, a marketing organization will not have a long-term success. Product decision, product decisions are needed to determine the core strategy for the marketing plan. Okay, so a product is a not very physical. A product is anything that can be offered to a market for attention, accusation, use of consumption that might satisfy any of. One. So this is uh, stated by Kotler and eh? Armstrong 2015. So tak semestinya produk tu adalah sesuatu yang kita boleh uh, orang kata kita boleh rasa, kita boleh pegang. Tapi uh, benda yang uh, contohnya services, services juga adalah satu jenis produk. Okay. So intangible intangible products cannot be seen, a smell heard or touch, most intangible products are in the form of services. Ha, ini lah yang saya cakap tadi. So, services adalah salah satu contoh, uh, in, uh, salah satu intangible product. Sebab kita tak boleh nampak, kita tak boleh bau, kita tak boleh dengar, okay, dan kita tak boleh rasa. Unlike tangible products, they are not stored, they are only available at the time of use. So, for example, uh, For example, engaging a personal tutor for tuition education or a night stay at a married hotel. Okay. Okay, need is a basic requirement. Okay, kita pun dah tahu dah macam mana nak bezakan mana satu need, mana satu want, mana satu uh, demand. So, need adalah uh, kita punya keperluan kita. So, keperluan kita adalah uh, food, shelter, transportation, etc. One is a specific requirement for product or services to match a need such as low uh, low fat food, organic, okay, this is low fat, okay, organic vegetables, luxury houses, etc. Okay, maksudnya kat sini, uh, one ni adalah satu uh, keperluan kita tu dalam bentuk yang lebih Spesifik. Maksudnya kalau makanan, makanan apa. So that is one. Okay, demand on the other hand is a set of wants plus the desire and ability to pay for the exchange. For example, a demand for a luxury car exists due to high income of an individual. So a product level, uh, okay, we come to product level. A product is anything that can be offered to a market to satis satisfy a one of need okay uh, products can be very in various form okay so ni kalau tengok ini adalah satu contoh a uh, product form kita sama ada physical goods okay physical goods services experiences events okay so ada company yang organize events so events adalah satu contoh a uh, product juga and then persons Uh, places, okay, person mungkin uh, ada company yang provide uh, service, okay, dia orang kata kita nak ambil mat ataupun pembantu rumah, 
kita kena ambil melalui company tersebut. So, they provide process. And then places, uh, and then properties, organizations, uh, information and also idea. Okay, in planning is market offering. The marketer needs to address five product levels. Okay, each level adds more customer value and the five constitute a customer Le, uh, value hierarchy. So, costly defines five level to a product. Okay. So, this is uh, the five le, uh, the five product level. You can see core benefit, generic product, expected product, augmented product and potential product. So, core benefit refers to uh, offered by a product or the reason why a product exists in a market. While generic product, uh, product refer to the product that consists of attributes or characteristics necessary for it to function. So the actual product turns the core product into a possible uh, set of characteristics. It is readily recognizable. The product are designed along with their characteristics and features. It includes a design, a brand and image and la uh, label okay so next we have augmented product it re uh, refers to the inclusion of additional features benefit attributes or related services okay that serves to differentiate the product from its competitors so augmented product ni ah uh, dia ada memberi kelainan lah kepada Produk yang sedia ada di pasaran ataupun kita punya competitor. And then potential product refers to all the possible augmentation and transformation a product might, a product might undergo in the future. And then we have, uh, okay. So next we have product classification. Product can be categorized, okay, based on its nature, characteristic and consumption. So the first one we have durable, durable and tangible products. So durable and tangible products can be classified into three groups. So durable, durable goods, okay, are tangible goods that get used repetitively over a longer period of time. And then we have non-durable goods. Non-durable goods refer to tangible goods that are normally consumed relatively fast in one or a few users. Then we have services. Services refer to activities, benefits or satisfaction that are on offer by a company. So it is intangible and does not result in the ownership of anything. So services have four unique characteristics that require uh, more quality control, supplier credibility and adaptability. So, uh, this is the uh, okay, characteristic for services. So, services, uh, the first one, intangibility means services cannot be seen, cannot be tasted, felt, heard or smelled. And then, inseparability, it refers to the uh, services cannot be separated from their providers. Okay. Um, okay. Ada yang memang services yang cannot be separated from their providers. Whether the providers are people or machines. Okay. Contohnya kita uh, guna okay, kita uh, okay, setiap rumah ada ada internet kita kita uh, ambil daripada unify so provider kita a uh, unify tu kita tak boleh nak separate okey services so, tu kita memang melalui a uh, unify kita nak kita gunakan tu so tu adalah contoh is separability and then we have variability variability refers to the uh, quality of services okey and it depends on who provides them as well as when, where and how they are provided. And then we have perishability and perish. Okay, means that services cannot be stored 
uh, for better sale or use. Okay, the perishability of a service is not a problem when demand is steady. However, when demand fluctuates, service firms often have difficult problems. Okay, next, consumer products and industry, industrial products. Okay, so products and service fall into two broad classes based on the type of consumer that use them. So product bought to satisfy personal and family needs are known as consumer products. And then we have product bought for the purpose of resale or to be used to make other products is known as industrial product. So we have two types of, of products and then we have a uh, next consumer good classification okay in, in addition to categorizing by type of offering most product intended for consumer use can be further categorized okay uh, by how frequently and where they are purchased okay so for uh so the first one is convenience good Okay, convenience good, good that our consumer usually purchases frequently, immediately, and with minimal effort. So, uh, okay, a staple products are products that are bought most regular basis for regular use. Okay, for example, so cooking oil toothpaste, that is example of uh, staple products. Then we have impulse product. Okay. So, impulse products are products that are bought with minimum planning or search effort. Okay, we have newspaper, magazine and candy. And then we have emergency product. Products that are bought during an emergency or critical condition that are plaster, umbrella and raincoats. Okay, so emergency product. Uh, okay, kalau plaster ni, okay, sebab kalau kita contohnya ada berlaku uh, small uh, injured kan kat rumah uh, so kita perlukan plaster, umbrella uh, untuk uh, duri uh, rainy rainy days and then we have uh, tadi adalah convenience good and then we have shopping goods, shopping goods less frequently bought by customer. Okay, uh, then for shopping goods, we have homogeneous and heterogeneous shopping goods. So, homogeneous, uh, these are goods that consumers see as being basically the same, which consumers then stop for the lowest price. Okay. Okay, shop for the lowest price. For example, clothing and accessories. That is homo genus. Sama, tapi kita akan pilih dengan harga yang lebih uh, rendah lah, yang lebih berbaloi. Okay, next. Heterogeneous shopping goods. These goods are seen by consumer to differ in quality, style, suitability and lifestyle compatibility. So, comparison between heterogeneous shopping products are often quite Difficult because they may have unique features and different levels of quality and price. Okay, for example. Okay, for example, we have sofa, refrigerator, jeans and so on. Okay, so other product. Okay, kalau yang first tadi homogenous tu, dia sama tapi kita akan cari Uh, kita boleh kita boleh consider untuk cari yang apa untuk pilih yang uh, lowest price so that is homogeneous shopping goods but heterogeneous dia lebih kepada kita tengok quality style kena tak dengan kita lifestyle kita okay and then uh, suitability so kalau sofa contohnya sofa tu uh, uh, mungkin memang ada yang lower price tapi 
kita kalau nak beli sofa kita tengok juga rumah kita konsep apa uh, so itu uh, sebab tu sofa ni boleh dah dikategorikan sebagai heterogen heterogeneous okay, sorry heterogeneous shopping goods okey Alright, so next we have specialty goods. Okay, refer to goods that are purchased due to their unique characteristic or brand identification that make them well known among significant consumer. Then answer goods, consumer uh, goods that the consumer either does not know about or knows about, about but does not normally think of buying. Most major innovation are answered until the consumer becomes aware them through advertising. And then we have industrial good classification. Okay, industrial goods that are once purchased for further operation or business use. Okay, tadi lah kita cakap. So the difference between consumer products and industrial products is based on the purpose. Okay, so we have material and parts. Okay. So, untuk industrial good ni ada material and parts. Maksudnya, dia boleh jadi produk akhir lagi. So, uh, material and parts are that will be transformed entirely into something else. So, transform into something else. So, material and parts are products that are purchased and then react as a small part of the buyer's product when the buyer manufactures his product. And then we have capital items. Capital items are long-lasting goods that aid in the buyer's production or operation, including installation and accessory equipment. Installation consists of major purchases such as buildings and fixed equipment. So next, we have supplies and business services. It refers to intangible which are used by firms in the short term that facilitate developing or managing the finished product. So, kita ada materials and part and then capital item and the last one is supplies and business service. Okay, so next we can uh, we move to product line and mix decision. Okay, in 2015, Kotlet and Keller defined product line as a group products that uh, group of products or services that satisfy a class of needs are used together and are sold to the same customer group, are distributed to the same type of outlet or fall within a given price range. So a product mix it is, is defined as the sum of all products and various offered by an organization. Okay, a product mix or product assortment consists of all the product lines and items that a marketer offers for sale. An electronic company manufactures a number of different products such as computers, television, smartphone and camera. The product mix with is the number of product lines offer. Maksudnya kat sini, okay, untuk uh, part product line and mix decision ni, uh, a product mix tu maksudnya satu company tapi dia menghasilkan beberapa uh, jenis product. So, contoh yang kat sini tu dia kata uh, okay, uh, satu company kilang, apa, satu company elektronik dia menghasilkan TV, komputer, etc. etc. Ataupun uh, contohnya uh, company Nestle bawah tu ada uh, dia ada produk susu, uh, Milo and then apa lagi, macam-macam uh, lagi. So, itu adalah product mix. So, tengok kat bawah ni. Okay, the product line and the product mix. So, we have, okay, product line. Okay, uh, the product mix, computer, mobile phones and camera. Okay, uh, then computer tu kita ada full spec, business, uh, laptop. And then we have uh, mobile phone, we have smartphone, 3G, cameras, we have compact camera. So, camera ni pun mungkin ada macam-macam jenis lagi. So, itu adalah. Uh, ini adalah contoh produk mix. mix. So, awak boleh uh, fikir, mungkin boleh go through lagi, mungkin ada banyak lagi contoh-contoh uh, produk mix ya lain. So, produk lain lain is influenced by company objective and resources such as upselling and cross-selling. 
So marketer scaling turn it product line into waste. Okay. Uh, and then we have okay. Product line stretch occurs when a company lengthen its product line beyond its current range. Okay, we have done market stretch is when a company position in the middle market where we want to introduce a lower price line. And then we have companies at the lower end of a market can stretch their line upward. Up market stretch, company may wish to enter the high end of the market for more growth, higher margin, or simply to position themselves as a full line manufacturer. And then we have companies in the middle range of the market may decide to stretch their line in both directions. So maksudnya, two-way stretch is where companies serving the middle market might decide to stretch the line in both directions. Next, we have product line filling. So product line filling is adding more items within the present range of the line. Next, line filling should not be overdone as it should, it could cannibalize on product and create confusion to customer. So differentiation of each product in the consumer mind is vital. So setiap apa uh, produk yang dikeluarkan tu, okay, mestilah uh, berbeza, okay. Sebab dia kata differentiation of each product in the consumer mind is vital. Kita tak nak um, uh, menimbulkan confusion, confusion, okay, ataupun kekeliruan dalam uh, uh, minda uh, customer kita. So pricing strategy must be matched with the product line and mix. Okay, in the terms of demand and cost interrelationship and are subject to different degrees of competition. Okay, for an instance, Norton Antivirus offers a product uh, business with a standard package and then we have premium package and, uh, and then, uh, okay, deluxe package. Okay, so you can see here, this is product mix pricing strategy. Okay, then dia ada tiga. Uh, okay, ada tiga package kalau tengok ni standard, deluxe and premium. So, setiap tu mesti ada satu perbezaan yang jelas. Okay, for example, kalau standard ni uh, hanya untuk satu PC. And then kalau deluxe, uh, deluxe uh, boleh untuk 5 PC. Sama ada 5 PC, smartphone or tablets boleh mix. And then untuk premium pula boleh digunakan untuk 10 PC. Okay. And then yang bagus ni premium ni uh, boleh ada ada backup dia sekali. Okay. So bila uh, produk punya information tu. Okay. Uh, jelas untuk setiap jenis. Ini tidak akhirnya uh, uh, customer dapat information yang secukupnya, so tidaklah menimbulkan kekeliruan dalam uh, semasa proses uh, pemilihan dan jual beli. So and next we have okay product mix pricing. Okay, you can go through here. Okay, we have product line pricing and then optional feature, captive uh, product pricing, two part pricing. Okay. And then buy product pricing, product building, pricing. Okay. Okay. Kalau tu part pricing ni yang biasa ni, um, contoh yang jelas kalau awak pergi taman tema. Okay. Nak masuk tu, okay taman tema ataupun uh, apa tu uh, yang kita pergi untuk main uh, apa Paris Wheel apa benda semua tu. Uh, okay. Kita nak masuk tu dah dikenakan P. Lepas nak main uh, setiap game tu, ada lagi bayaran dia. Uh, tu, that is two part pricing. Okay, so, awak boleh go through the uh, the example here. And then, branding strategy. What is branding? Okay. A well-established brand name is a Value, valuable asset and companies whose brand have become nearly synonymous with their product categories often find them so struggling to keep their brand from becoming generic terms. 
Okay. So what is branding? Okay, a brand is a name, term, sign, symbol, or design, or some combination of this element intended to identify the goods and services of one seller or group of seller to differentiate and to differentiate them from those of competitor. Okay, so dalam branding ni sama ada uh, number, term, sign, symbol, semua tu dalam kategori untuk kita punya branding. Brands are valuable, intangible asset and needs to be managed carefully. So what are brand elements? A brand name is a name that is part of the brand that can be spoken. So a brand mark is a design. Okay, design element. So brand name can be spoken. Okay, brand mark is a design element. Okay, such as a symbol, okay, logo, character, okay, symbol, logo, character, or even a sound. Okay, so uh, yeah, uh, sound we can intel inside sound that provides visual, auditory, and recognition for the product. Okay, a trade name is a legal trading name or a business name which may or may not relate directly to the branding of its product. It is the name which a business trade under for commercial purposes, although it's registered. A legal name used for contracts or other formal situation may be another. Okay, a trademark is a registered and protected brand name, symbol or logo. Okay, it is typically comprises a name, word, phrase, logo, symbol, design, image, or a combination of these elements. So this is okay. Ni contoh contoh dalam ni adalah contoh untuk trademark. Okay, bila uh, okay trademark ni already registered and protected. So uh, orang lain yang nak gunakan logo ke symbol yang sama, image ke, okay, adalah dilarang dan menyalahi dari sis, uh, dari sisi uh, undang-undang lah. Maksudnya kalau kita guna benda yang sama, mungkin kita uh, akan disaman. Kalau benda tu dibawa uh, ke, uh, ke, ni lah, uh, ke pihak yang sepatutnya. So, uh, sebab tu kalau kita nak buat apa-apa logo ke, okay, untuk kita punya company, kita kena Uh, berhati-hati dah check terlebih dahulu lah adakah ad, uh, ada company yang dah already registered trademark ke uh, dah guna benda tu so, jangan, jangan tiru lah jangan copy paste lah orang dah buat, kita tak boleh guna dah ok, branding strategy, ok uh, what is brand equity, so brand equity must be managed and measured True. So, brand audit such as in-depth examination of the brand health or tracking studies based on consumer feedback that, pro uh, okay, that provide valuable insight into the short-term effectiveness of marketing programs and activities. So, strategy brand management involves the design and implement implementation of marketing activities and programs to build measure and manage brands to maximize their value. So, it uh, has four uh, main steps. Okay, identifying and establishing brand positioning and then we have we have planning and implement, implementing brand marketing and then measuring and interpreting brand performance and then growing, sustaining brand value. Okay, next we have Co-branding. So, what is co-branding? Okay, uh, the practice of using multiple brand names together, okay, using together on a single product or service. When two established brand names or different companies are used on the same product, it provides way for firms to combine forces so that their marketing efforts work in synergy. Okay, co-branding can be in the form of ingredient co-branding. Okay, for example, the computers with Intel processor. Okay, without Intel, buyers might not buy. Uh, might not buy. Okay, this is buy. Buy the computers. 
Okay. That is. Maksudnya kat dalam satu produk tu. Dalam dia tu ada. Uh, produk daripada. Company lain. So. Uh, computer perlukan processor. So. Dan computers we have Intel processor kat dalam tu. Uh, baru dia lengkap. That is co-branding lah sebenarnya. And then we have same, same company co-branding. Okay, for example, uh, more than one product promotes their own brands together simultaneously. For example, Nestle promoting Nescafe and Milo together. Okay, so Nescafe and Milo ni adalah di bawah company Nestle. Alright, so uh, Nestle akan promote both Nescafe and Milo. Okay, sebab Nescafe pun uh, ada macam-macam jenis uh, produk juga. Gold, uh, lepas tu ada yang warna hijau, ada yang warna merah. Okay, macam-macam. Kalau Milo pun ada yang uh, dia punya apa, macam cereal je, macam Nestle tu. Okay, so Nestle promote both Nescafe and Milo. So that is same company co Brandy. Then we have joint venture co branding Okay, two or more companies going for strategic alliance to pro present a product to the target audience. So, for example, Malaysia Airlines and Maybank form a partnership offering a Maybank premier credit card where the card owner will have unlimited access to mass golden launch at all airport. Then we have multiple sponsor co-branding. Okay, this form of co-branding involves two or more companies working together to form a strategic alliance in technology, promotion, sales, etc. Okay, for example, Petronas and Maybank forming a mature debit or credit card partnership. Okay, so that is a co-branding. Okay, next we have product differentiation. So, product differentiation is very important, okay, in creating a strong brand. Okay, it may be as simple as packaging the goods in a creative way or as elaborate, uh, as incorporating new functional features. Okay, it is simple for tangible product but complicated for services because it cannot be differentiated easily. Okay, the differentiation may lie in adding value services and uh, improving their quality. So, so you can see, okay, in table, that, uh, this is a strategy of product uh, differentiation. Okay, we have, okay, in the form, okay, many products can be differentiated in form, okay, for example, the size, shape, or physical structure of a product. And, okay, or features. Okay, most product can offer in varying features that uh, supplement its basic fun function. Okay, a company can identify and select appropriate features by surveying buyers and then calculating customer value versus company cost for each features. And then marketers must decide whether to offer feature customization or at higher cost or a few standard packages at a lower cost. And then performance quality. So we can uh, differentiate the product based on the performance quality. And then uh, performance quality, durability, reliability and also style. Next, services differentiation. So ordering is. Okay, this refer to how easy it is for the customer to place an order with the company. And then delivery. This refers to how well the product or service is delivered to the customer. Then installation. Okay, this refer to the work done to make the product operational in its planned location. Differentiating at this point in the consumption chain is particularly important for companies with complex product. And then... Customer training, customer consulting and also maintenance 
prepare this is the for services different session. Okay, branding decision. Okay, it said that today hardly anything goes are branded as a commodity. A basic product that it cannot be physically differentiated in the mind of consumer. Okay, so in figure 9.6 shows the initial decision to brand the product that are then several other related to decision to make. Okay, brand name strategy. Producer who brand their product also have to decide what brand name strategy to pursue. Okay, the choices include individual brand name. Okay, and then we have company branding, blanket uh family name. Okay, uh we can see that individual brand name could be branded with individual name. A firm may decide it wants. A brand which has no association association with any of its other brands. Okay, for company branding, the trade name combined with individual product names. Okay, blanket family name. One name for all products such as his Fanta, Veggie, and the crowd. The idea is to use the reputation of the established family or company them to launch a new associated product. For example, Maggie may use the other to launch a new type of ketchup. Okay, this is blanket family name. The color blanket family name is the one that 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 is so next we have branding extension. When an established brand name is used in a new product category, this strategy is called brand extension. Okay, so you can see in this table, okay, advantage of brand extension and disadvantage of brand extension. So, um. For brand extension, expedit the acceptance of new products. That is the advantage. Increases brand image and then low risk perceived by the customer. Okay, for product variety. And then increases consumer interest. Okay, so bila ada lebih banyak. Okay, bila lebih banyak pilihan. So, okay. In consumer interest terhadap brand tu juga semakin meningkat. And then the co the cost of developing a new brand is safe. And then economies of scale, packaging, and labeling efficiency. And then cost of introductory and follow up marketing for program is reduced. But it also have a few disadvantages. Okay, brand extension is unrelated market if too far valid of loss of reliability. It must be within the product categories in which the established brand name will work. Okay, failure if the new product may tarnish the image of the original brand or vice versa. Okay, maksudnya kat sini, kalau uh, new product tu boleh menaikkan image uh, brand tu sebut, it is good. But it may, uh, okay, it may also tarnish, okay, the existing uh, or kata reputation that we have. And next, possibilities of lack of awareness and trial due to the management may not provide enough investment for the introduction of new products. And then, without clear advantage of a competitive brand in the new category, the brand extension will fail. Inappropriate extension will lead to the lack of brand integrity and competency, and some line extension may confuse and perhaps even frustrate the consumer. Okay, brand extension can be broadly classified into two general categories. We have line extension, we have also category extension. For line extension, a brand a new product using the parent brand that targets a new market segment. 
within a product category currently served by a current by the parent brand. Meanwhile, for category extension, the parent brand is used to enter a different product category from that currently served by the parent brand. Okay. Maksudnya, kalau line extension tu, dia adalah dia dalam line yang sama. Tapi kalau kategori kita, uh, uh, kita buat produk yang dalam kategori yang berbeza. Okay, some for prefer branded variants where specific brand lines supply to specific retailers or distribution channel. Okay, this may lead to license a product is one whose brand name has been licensed to a manufacturer who is actually make the product. Okay, next we go to branding portfolio. So a specific brand may be designed and marketed to different market segment. Example of brand portfolio, Hugo, Hugo Bo, a Boss is presented in 9.7. Okay, a brand portfolio must be judged by its ability to maximize brand equity. Okay, the optimal brand portfolio is one where each brand maximizes equity in combination with all other brands in the portfolio. Okay, so tengok, ni adalah brand for portfolio. Okay. They are the menswear, women's wear accessories. Uh, okay, boss black. And then we have boss selection, boss orange, Boss green and then uh, the last one who go okay so uh, what boleh tengok semula okay contoh so, brand portfolio ni okay so we and uh, next we have branding reinforcement so brand equity is reinforced by marketing action that consistently convey the meaning of the brand to consumer in terms of what product the brand represents, what core benefit it supply, what needs it satisfy, how the brand makes those products superior, which strong, favorable and unique brand association should exist in the mind of consumers. Okay, reinforcing brand equity requires innovation where firm must introduce new product and new marketing activities that satisfy their target marketing. Uh, sorry, their target market. So firm must be able to recognize the cost and benefit okay, between those marketing activities that strengthen the brand and reinforce it meaning. Then we have branding re re revitalization, uh, revitalization, okay. Differences in consumer preferences and taste, the images of new competitors or technology, or any new development in the marketing environment could affect, okay, could affect brand's influence. So in revitalizing a brand, marketers need to understand what the source of brand equity were to begin with, okay. Okay, next is packaging. So, packaging has basic function of holding contents together, protecting the physical good and as it moves the distribution channel. So, packaging ni adalah penting. Okay, bukan sahaja untuk, uh, okay, bukan hanya dari segi dia punya physical look, tapi juga adalah untuk jaga konten, apa, uh, produk lah. Apa yang ada dalam packaging tu. So, packaging involves three levels. Okay, we have primary packaging, secondary packaging and shipping packaging. So, primary packaging. Okay, this level holds the actual product. Okay, uh, for example, big bottle. So, this packaging is minimal since it's only served to protect the product. Okay, for some products, the package is protected by one or more of the package. Okay, box holding the perf perfume bottle. Okay, so secondary packaging. This label normally creates attraction and gives uh, protection to primary package while providing product information. So, marketers use a variety of other methods 
to communicate with uh, customer, such as how to use instruction, contents, ingredients, uh, certification, etc. Et and then we uh, next we go to shipping packaging. So this level used to for transportation and ease of logistics. So for example, a bigger wooden box for export purposes. Okay, that is packaging. Then we go to labeling. So labels identify products or brands and describe several things about the product. So label labels perform several functions such as identify identifying the product or brand. Okay, grading the product, describe the product, and also promote the product. Okay, okay, how to promote the product? Okay, in the labeling, we all uh okay always have attractive graphic okay and then labeling can be divided into three categories okay we have persuasive labeling so persuasive labeling ni selalunya uh, adalah penting untuk uh, information for example the label that is not on the box domino domino's pizza does not indicate, indicate any information about the ingredients of the pizza but identity of dominoes is highlighted here. So, uh, sorry, kita tengok kotak pun uh, cantik kan? Sebab kita nak menarik uh, perhatian customer lah. And then we have informational labeling. So, bila cakap pasal informational labeling ni, of course, we could find information about the product here. So, for example, most pharmacy Pharmaceutical products such as Panadol Activas has information labeling that states the ingredient, dosage and expiry date. So, information labeling pun sangat penting sebab kalau tak ada tu, uh, customer tak boleh nak orang cakap dapat information berkenaan dengan produk tersebut. Dan selanjutnya, uh, zaman sekarang pun orang lebih peka uh, mengenai ingredients. Lepas tu kita pun nak tahu dia punya, kalau kita Islam nak tengok dia halal ke tak. So, informational labeling ni penting. Okay. Kalau dekat Malaysia, dekat Malaysia nak tengok halal ke tak ada, ada cok halal. Tapi kalau kita pergi luar negara, ingredients ni lah yang kita, uh, kalau tak ada cok halal, kita kena go through ingredients dalam uh, food yang kita nak beli tu, okay? Uh, so, information yang saya beli sangat penting untuk uh, make proper, okay, to make proper selection. Okay, and then we have universal product codes, okay, or UPC, okay, uh, imprinted on a package has, uh, okay, the symbol has two part, okay, machine readable barcode and a human readable 12 digit UPC number. So, dekat dalam, uh, dekat produk-produk akan ada barcode tu and that is called as universal product codes. Next, uh, okay, the last part we have product identity and then lab, uh, packaging, labeling, warranties and guarantees. Okay, so packaging, uh, okay, it allows the symbol to be scanned by machine, the codes with brand name, packaging sizes and prices. Okay, and then it also connected to the cash register. Okay, this is for UPC, okay? Okay, uh, it also connected to the cash register to provide information on customer purchases, stock and trade sale. Uh, UPC barcodes were originally created to help the grocery stores speed up of the uh, checkout process and keep better track of inventory. Okay. Next, uh, warranties and warranty. Warranty decrease the consumer perceived risk and may be useful in two situations. Okay, the first one, when the company or the product is not familiar or new. Okay. And when the quality of product is important to the company, Okay, so seharinya bila kita beli, beli suatu barang, kalau kita, uh, kalau walaupun uh, brand tu, okay, company tu tak familiar, tapi bila ada warranty, 
at least kita rasa secure okay so uh, dalam uh, kalau apa-apa jadi we did the uh, time okay contohnya satu tahun kita boleh uh, claim daripada company tersebut selalunya adalah syarat-syarat apa kerosakan ke apa masalah yang uh, ada the claim okay ataupun when the quality of product is important to the co competition maksudnya uh, selalunya Uh, company tu sendiri dia nak jaga quality product dia okay, uh, Sebab dia ada pesaing Sebab tu juga dia berikan Guaranti kepada uh, consumer Supaya consumer ada uh, Dapat keyakinan Terhadap produk yang uh, Mereka beli okay, Terhadap company tu juga uh, So uh, sebab kan kita dah uh, Go through sebelum ni okay, uh, Customer punya Satisfaction tu sangat penting dalam uh, kita uh, dalam memastikan satu market, marketing tu berjaya. Okay, so kita dah habis dah. Okay, the second part of the uh, chapter 5. Okay, so kita tinggal uh, the last part of chapter 5. We will continue next week. So, I hope uh, You will go through again this note, okay? Uh, make sure that you understand, okay? So, uh, I will end this recording here, okay? We will uh, meet face-to-face -face next week, okay? Have a good day and see you. Thank you.